In this video, we will provide the solution to question number nine from the practice exam number three for math 2270, for which we're given a linear transformation. Let T be a map from R2 to R3, given by the formula T of X1, X2 is, uh, is X1 plus 4X2 for the first coordinate, 2X1 plus 5X2 for the second coordinate, and 3X1 plus 6X2 for the third coordinate. We're given a basis for R2, B, uh, which is given as the vectors 1 and 2, and then also 3 and negative 1. We're given a basis for R3, a non-standard basis, of which we get 1, 2, 3, 1, 0, and negative 1, and 0, negative 1, 2. And then we're asked to compute the matrix representation of the linear transformation, uh, C, T, B. So we're going to represent the domain using B coordinates, and we're going to represent the co-domain using C coordinates. Now, this is not the standard matrix representation. This is the matrix representation with respect to C and B coordinates here. So recall that the formula that we need to do here, let's call this matrix A uh, that we're trying to compute right here. So A is going to be given by the formula, which we're going to compute the image of B1, with, and we put it inside of C coordinates. We're then going to take the image of B2 and put that also into C coordinates. And now if basis B was bigger, where of course B here is the basis for the domain. If we, if we had more, we could keep on going here, but that's going to be sufficient for this one right here. So we need to find the, B, the C coordinates for T of B1 and uh, T of B2, which what are those vectors? Let's stick B1 and B2 into the transformation. So you'll notice if we take... Uh, if we take the if we take the vector b1, which is 1 and 2, we plug it into the, the formula, we're going to get 1 plus 8, which is 9. That's the first one there. Uh, and then we're going to stick in, for the next one, we're going to get 2 plus 10, which is 12. And then for the third coordinate, we're going to get 3 plus 12, which is 15. Sorry, we need to find this vector in C coordinates. And then for the next one, we're going to stick in b2 for which we're going to get 3 minus 4, which is negative 1. Uh, then we'll stick the 3, negative 1 to the second coordinate. We're going to get 6 minus 5, which is 1. And then for the last one, we're going to stick it in. We're going to get 9 minus 6, which is 3. So this right here, we need to put this into C coordinates, like so. For which, in order to then compute these, right, to find these coordinate vectors, what we're going to do is we're going to take the matrix, which we take C augment these vectors we just found a moment ago. So we're going to take 1, 2, 3, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, negative 1, 2, augment that with 9, 12, and 15, and then negative 1, 1, and 3, like so. So we didn't need to now row reduce this matrix, for which is this is a short response question. If you use your calculator to row reduce it, that would be perfectly acceptable. Um, I'm just going to do the details right here just to show you everything that goes on, although these steps are not necessary for the calculation, for which I want to get pivots below the one there in the first column. So we're going to take row two minus two times row one, and we're going to take row three minus three times row one. So we get a minus two, minus two, zero, minus 18, plus two for the second row. For the third row, we're going to get a minus three, minus three, zero. We're going to get minus 27, and then we're going to get plus three. For which then the next matrix in consideration here, we're going to get one, zero, zero. That's the first column. Then the second column, well, I'm just going to write down the rows here. We get one, zero. So bring that down, 9, negative 1. So then for the second row, you get 2 minus 2, which is 0. You get 0 minus 2, which is going to be a negative 2, negative 1 there. You're going to get 12 minus 18, which is a negative 6. And then 1 plus 2, which is a 3. For the third row, we got 0, negative 4, 2. We're going to get 15 minus 27, right? Uh, which that's going to give us, what do we get there? Uh, negative 12. And then lastly, we get 3 plus 3, which is 6. That's the first step. Moving our pivot position now to the second row there. Um, I want to get rid of the negative 4 below, so I'm going to take row 3. We're just going to subtract from it 2 times row 2. So we get a positive 4, a neg a positive 2 right there. We're then going to get a positive 12, 
And then last, we're going to get a negative 6, like so, for which then you can see what happens with that row. So leaving the first row alone, 1, 1, 0, 9, and negative 1. Leaving the second row alone, we get 0, negative 2, negative 1, negative 6, and 3. Then the third row you see turns all into zeros, except for the 3, 3 position, for which we then get 2 plus 2, which is 4. We're going to get negative 12 plus 12, which is 0, and 6 minus, z, uh, 6 minus 6, which is 0 as well. Now, when you look at that last row, there's no concern going on there whatsoever, the fact you have a 4 and a bunch of zeros everywhere else. This would be saying something like 4x3 equals 0. There is a solution to that equation. It's not a contradiction. Just be x equals 3 is 0 there. Uh, no big deal. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I would then take the fourth row, the third row, excuse me, and, and I'm going to scale it by 1 fourth. Right? So we're going to replace that with a 1. And then we can get rid of the number above it pretty easily because you have these zeros everywhere. It's not going to affect anything. So we're going to take row 2, add to it row 3. This is going to give us a 0 right there. won't affect anything else. So that's why I'm doing all these row operations at once. Um, then the next thing to do is you move your pivot position back to the negative 2 right there, for which then we need to divide everything by negative 2. So we're going to get negative 1 half row 2 which again, that would then replace that with a positive 1. We're going to get here a positive 3. And then this number right here becomes a negative 3 halves. And then lastly, to get rid of the 1 that's above it, we're going to take row 1, subtract from it row 2, for which case that'll go to 0. Uh, we didn't change anything there. We get 0. You get 9 minus 3, which is going to be 6. And then this last one is the one that's going to give us a little bit of concern because of the fractions, right? This right here needs to become negative 1 uh, plus 3 halves. So that's just a 1 half. Nothing too complicated there. But still, you know, fractions sometimes confuse us. In which case then our matrix, when we write it in this RREF, we end up with 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So the basis should have reduced to be the identity matrix. Now, the numbers we really care about, we're going to get 6, 1 half, 3, negative 3 halves, and then 0, 0. In which case, then our final answer is going to be this matrix right here. This matrix is our matrix A. You do need to indicate that this is the matrix. If you just stop with this with this augmented matrix, then you won't get full credit because you haven't indicated that what the answer is to the question. Uh, you should not leave it up to the inference of the grader. You need to specify it yourself, for which case then we record down this change of basis matrix, which was 6, 1 half, 3, negative 3 halves, 0, and 0. This is... The, uh, this, not the change of basis matrix, excuse me, this is the matrix representation using both B and C coordinates for this linear transformation.